Hey, sixth grade. Um, it is April 15th, and this is lesson 11. Um, just a couple of reminders before we dive into today's class. Make sure you have your notes ready to go. We're going to take some important notes today. Uh, we're starting a new topic, which is really exciting. Um, and also make sure you have a space where you can really focus today. Okay. Um, I'm really excited because we are going to start talking about the coordinate plane today, which is something that you've seen before, um, but we're going to build onto what you have already learned about the coordinate plane and combine it with what we now know about negative numbers on a number line. So excited to do that with you today. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, go ahead and set up your notes, please. They should look like this. This is unit seven, lesson 11, points on the coordinate plane. So we will be successful today if you're able to do things like describe uh, what quadrant points fall in. I'll explain that in just a little bit. You'll be successful today if you're able to plot points given their ordered pair, including with negative values in their ordered pair. Um, and you'll be successful if you can look at a point on a coordinate plane and tell what the coordinate, uh, what the ordered pair is for that point. And we'll practice all of that in within the lesson today. Okay. Um, so just a quick review from uh, last school year. An ordered pair is uh, something that tells the position or the place, the location of a point on the coordinate plane. So this point right here has an ordered pair of three, four. What does that mean? That means that the X value along the X axis is three uh, for this point. And this point also has a Y value along the Y axis of four. In fifth grade, you only looked at coordinate planes with positive numbers. But now you have all of this experience with negative numbers and number lines you know that actually we can think of the axis, the x-axis and the y-axis as a number line. Number lines continue past zero into the negative numbers. So today when we're looking at ordered pairs, we're not just looking at positive numbers and positive numbers. I'm actually gonna extend that number line down into the negatives. And same thing with the x-axis, extend that number to the left into the negatives. So I have two number lines crossing each other with positive and negative numbers. Really exciting. Um, if there's any vocabulary here that you didn't learn last year or you didn't remember, go ahead and pause the video and take a note for yourself now. Awesome. Uh, we are going to play a game and I'm really excited to do this with you today. Um, this is an archery target. target. Um, archery is like bow and arrow, I think Katniss. Um, here is an image of an archery target on a coordinate plane. Notice here is the origin, that point zero, zero, and there's the positive uh, values on my x-axis. And notice how they continue to the negative numbers. Okay, same thing on my y-axis. These are the positive numbers. And then down here, it goes into the negative numbers. Okay, so what I've done, my coordinate plane um, is sort of extended. And now instead of just having one section, I've got four sections. Those are called quadrants. Okay. Um, the scores for landing an arrow in the colored regions are shown. So when you're aiming in archery, you want to get as precise to your um, target as you can. So the center, this yellow section here, is worth 10 points if you land an arrow in there. The red section, pretty close but not perfect, is eight points. Blue is a little farther out, that's six points. Green is four points. And then this white section is two points, okay? If you don't hit the board, no points, okay? So here's what I want you to do. Um, I want you to name the coordinates for a possible landing point to score. So for example, where could you land and earn six points? You could land and earn six points if you land in the blue. So the goal is to name the coordinates or the ordered pair in a location in the blue where you would get six points. This is more fun if we do it online. So what you're going to do in just a second 
is click the link below the video to explore this applet with me. Don't click it yet, watch how it works, and then you'll have a chance to play around. Okay. When you click that link, it will take you here. The directions are included here again so that you don't need to go back uh, to my video. But if I wanted to land um, somewhere in, um, in the blue, let me triple check that. Did I wanna land in the blue? Yep, six points, yep, in the blue. If I wanted to land somewhere in the blue, I'm gonna pick um, some grid lines, maybe like right here. And I'm gonna actually try to draw a point using this applet right here, okay? So to me, let's see, I see that the X value on my X axis is negative seven, and my Y value is negative four. I'm four units below zero. So this point, negative seven, negative four would earn me six points. In order to show that, I'm gonna go ahead and type in negative seven comma, oops, negative four. And you can see it dropped a point right here. So this helps me to check my work. Does that arrow give me six points? Yes, because if I land in the blue, those rules said I get six points, okay? Um, sometimes the point is hard to see if it's the same color. I can change the color of the point to make it a little bit easier to see. I find that to be helpful. If I want a new one, I can just click down here where it says two, and I can go ahead and put another point for the next question, and that's where you're going to pick up here, okay? So uh, your second question said name coordinates for a possible landing point to score 10 points, okay? So go ahead and uh, pause the video now. Scroll down and click the link and make sure you have uh, coordinates for all these possible landing points. I'll see you back here in a few minutes. All right, so you should have been able to have some time to explore this on your own. If you missed my pause point, go ahead and make sure that you have completed that pause and then hit play when you're ready to go, okay? There are many possible correct answers, but hopefully you were able to see your points land in the different colored zones for different point values. Um, possible answers that I included are here. Um, the ones that I wanna review uh, are this one, let's see. Number three said a place where you get two points that's within this white part of the circle, so this outside ring here. Um, notice that this point has a, an X value of negative eight. So I can see on the number line, here's the vertical number line and here's the horizontal one. I'm at an X value of negative eight, but my Y value is over here at zero. I haven't gone up or down at all. I'm just sitting right on zero, okay? So that is one possible point for you, okay? Um, awesome. I hope you enjoyed that. I want to give you a reminder here that there is a question in the Google form that asks you for your answer to question one. So you can go ahead and put in this coordinate pair, negative seven, negative four, into coordinate into um, your Google form question one. If you need a little bit of time to do that, go ahead and pause the video. Awesome. All right, folks, that was really exciting. Um, this link will be um, still in this Google form. So once your scores are released, you'll be able to access it and keep playing around with it. Let's do a little bit more practice. Um, there's some vocab that you need to know. Um, and I promise when you get to 10th grade geometry, your geometry teacher is gonna reference this vocabulary and he or she is gonna be really impressed when you know it. So follow along with me. The coordinate plane is divided into four quadrants. One, two, three, and four, as shown here. These, um, these symbols are called Roman numerals. They're called? Awesome. Maybe you've seen these before. If you watch uh, football, if you watch American football, the Super Bowls are named with Roman numerals. So maybe you've seen, uh, maybe you've seen that before. Roman numerals are just a different way to label numbers, and it's typical to call quadrants by Roman numerals instead of the number one, two, three, and four, but it means the same thing. So here's quadrant one, 
quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Um, in our class, we'll call these quadrants by these names, but also mathematicians all over the world call these quadrants by these names. These are like um, very common, this is very common vocabulary in geometry. Um, here are three ordered pairs I'm noticing. A says, in which quadrant is H? Go ahead and take a second, jot down 7A on your paper, and maybe jot down these quadrants, just a brief sketch. Go ahead and answer, in which quadrant is H? Just as a reminder, in order to answer this question, you need to know that H is at the point negative 1, negative 5. So go ahead and find that in your uh, in your kind of quadrant map in your coordinate grid. Last ten seconds. All right, here's what I was thinking. H is in quadrant three. How do I know this? I know this because the X value of its ordered pair is negative. So I know that I'm looking at the negative numbers on the X axis. So I'm looking to the left here, okay? I also know that H has a Y value that is negative. So once I know I'm to the left, then I also know I've got to be below on this vertical number line, okay? So H is down here, that's quadrant three. Give yourself a star next to A if you got it right on your own. Nicely done. B, a point has a positive Y coordinate. In which quadrant could it be? Go ahead and take 30 seconds, answer on your own. All right, if you need another second, pause the video. Otherwise, here we go. Um, 7B, the answer is it could be in quadrant one or two. How do I know this? I know if I'm looking at the Y value along the Y axis, where are the positive numbers on this axis? Right, they are above zero. So, the, um, the point that has a positive Y value would have to be somewhere above the X axis in any of these locations, right? Um, this is quadrant one and this is quadrant two. So that's why B could be quadrant one or quadrant two. Please put a star next to B if you got it right on your own. Pause the video now and go ahead and answer question 7B in your Google form. Awesome, we're ready to move on. Question 7C is a great question to think carefully about. Catherine says that point I should be in quadrant two. Do you agree or disagree? Explain. Point I has coordinates of seven, negative four. Go ahead and identify which quadrant should it be in and state if you agree or disagree with Catherine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a timer. And let's do a minute and a half to write our answer for this question. Awesome. Please begin.
think about which value is the x value and which value is the y value in the ordered pair for point i. Okay, there is our time. Please pause the video if you didn't quite get your answer finished. Awesome. Catherine says that point I should be in quadrant two. Do you agree or disagree? Here's what I was thinking. Um, I wrote, I disagree. Did you say the same thing? I disagree because the X value seven is positive. So it is to the right of zero. The y value, negative 4, is negative, so it is below 0. 7, negative 4 is in quadrant 4. Okay. Let me show you what I'm talking about on my uh, coordinate grid picture here. If I'm trying to plot the point 7, negative 4, I know that the x value always comes first in an ordered pair, so the x value is 7. So that's how I said I know it's to the right on the x-axis because numbers to the right on a number line are positive. And my y coordinate is negative. So if I go over 7 this way positive on my x uh, x axis, my x number line, I've got to go below 0. I've got to go down to get to a y coordinate of negative 4. So it's going to be like somewhere over here. Okay, That is in quadrant 4. Okay, We write that. I know you're going to be typing this uh, in a second. We write that using a capital I and then a capital V. That means 4. Okay, and I'll finish out my notes. Here's quadrant three. One, two, three, four. Okay, here it is. It's question of the day. Your question of the day is why does point I belong in quadrant four, not quadrant two? You can use your answer to 7C to help you out. Go ahead and pause the video now and answer the question of the day. Why is point I in quadrant four, not quadrant two? Awesome. You should at this point have all of your questions in the Google form answered. We are going to review the lesson summary and then it is time for independent practice. Here is our lesson 11 summary. Go ahead and follow along with me, please. Just as the number line can be extended to the left to include negative numbers, the x and y axis of the coordinate plane can also be extended to include negative values. This is a really great picture of a coordinate grid. I can see what I'm used to seeing, which is this quadrant. That's our elementary school coordinate plane. But now that we know that negative numbers come over here to the left on a number line, as well as below on a vertical number line, now I've got these four quadrants. The ordered pair x, y can have negative x and y values. For b equals negative 4, 1, that point is right here, the x value of negative 4 tells us that the point is 4 units to the left of the y axis, or to the left of 0. The y value of 1, that's a positive 1, tells us that the point is 1 unit above the x axis. So this order pair is like instructions for how to get to this point right here. The same reasoning applies to the points a and c. The x and y coordinates for point a are positive, so A is to the right of the y-axis and above the x-axis. The x and y coordinates for point C are negative, that's down here, so C is to the left of the y-axis and below the y-axis. One thing I want to point out here, do you see this x value in the ordered pair for point C? What do you notice about it? It's a decimal number, right? This is negative 3.5. So notice if I wanted to find negative 3.5 on my number line, I'm going to be looking in between negative 3 and negative 4. That's because positive 3.5 is between positive 3 and positive 4. 
So same thing, just flipped in the negative numbers, right? So here's 3.5 um, and then a y value of negative three. So this one doesn't even fall in the grid lines. Maybe you saw some of that when you were working on your um, archery game. Awesome. Folks, we've already reviewed what quadrants are. Here's another diagram one more time to review your quadrants. Your independent practice today is on Illuminate, and you'll find on the next page of your Google form. It's on there because that's where I found the best question. It's not a quiz. It's just a regular classwork grade. If you need any help, please make sure you go stop by Office Hours with Mr. Zamora at 3.15 today. Um, and I'm really excited to keep working on this coordinate plane stuff with you tomorrow. Um, that's it for me. Have a great day.